I went on a little radioactivity excursion with a friend. Shout out to his mom for the car, otherwise we wouldn't have gotten that far. So where did we go? First stop was the Atomkeller Museum. Atom Basement or Cellar Museum, which is what today's video is about. I'm not gonna tell you the whole story, you've got to have some incentive to visit. For a modest 4 euros that's very well priced. But I think I have to provide some historical context after all to understand why this museum even exists. During the Nazi era there were attempts to explore nuclear technology. As part of that effort the Heigerloch research reactor was constructed. The goal was to make the fission of the atom discovered 7 years earlier to protect the reactor from being bombed, it was built in a rock cellar beneath a castle church where the Atomkeller Museum now stands. A reactor beneath a church sounds a bit macabre to be honest. The entire operation was hastily relocated here towards the end of World War II. Due to increased air raids on the capital, the project had to be continued elsewhere. For a mere 100 Reichsmark, they rented this cellar. Imagine explaining to today's landlords, what do you need the beer cellar for? Oh, hopefully a functional nuclear reactor, we are soon gonna build it. The delivery of 1.58 tons of uranium is already on the way. I don't, I don't think that will work today. There had been previous experiments, G1 to G3 and other before that, but they hadn't yet used uranium in this characteristic way. This is where the large scale experiment B8 was conducted, led by Weizsäcker, Würz, and from far away Heisenberg, who occasionally visited. The B8 experiment is the focus of this exhibit. Now onto the exhibition. First you pass the beautifully recreated experiment table of Otto Hahn, which is explained really well. On the table he casually had his one gram of radium in the form of a radium beryllium neutron source with paraffin to induce fission. The fission products could be collected using a Hans filter setup and the residue was measured with a Geiger Müller counter displaying the counts on the meter. That's roughly how the things worked back then, more on nuclear fission in future videos. The setup was really nicely recreated here. There were also some really nice mineral samples containing uranium, but they were displayed without much context. Lovely specimens, no doubt, but we are in the black forest prime uranium mineral area and I would like to have a bit more context linking to this whole black forest uranium context. So without much help I wouldn't know much about these minerals but luckily I had a geoscientist with me. But there were also some uranium glasses, I have no idea why they displayed next to the minerals. Hmm. And this is the heart of the museum, the research reactor. Or rather the replica, the original 1.58 tons of natural uranium metal cubes aren't there anymore. It's definitely eye-catching, such a bizarre experimental setup. And behind it there are the heavy water tanks. Unfortunately empty. Instead of enriching uranium-235 in natural uranium, they enrich the hydrogen in the moderator. In this case the hydrogen isotope H2, deuterium. A few liters of heavy water D2O were in these tanks. To initiate nuclear fission a radium beryllium source was also used. In the experiment they poured in the heavy water and plotted the neutron flux against the fill level. The idea was, the more heavy water added, the more thermal neutrons could induce fission. At a certain fill level the neutron flux should be high enough for a sustained nuclear chain reaction. Long story short, it didn't work. The neutron flux increased but wasn't sufficient to maintain a self-sustaining chain reaction. Still it's a funny setup. They even had a cross section of the original uranium cubes. Unfortunately it was a bit poorly labeled so I ended up measuring the replica until Marvin pointed out to me that the active material came from the small fragment nearby. So now let's talk about the reactor. The cubes were natural uranium, meaning mostly uranium 238. Inducing fission in uranium 238 with thermal neutrons is very difficult. Which is why uranium is typically enriched to increase the uranium-235 content. However, uranium-238 can capture moderated neutrons and become plutonium-239. Theoretically, self-sustaining fission could be achieved with natural uranium cubes. Researchers at the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology examined these cubes for signs of plutonium-239. Not because the reactor was intended to produce weapon-grade plutonium, but the presence of plutonium-239 and uranium-236 would indicate a high neutron flux. Their findings? 
Nothing. The neutron flux wasn't sufficient. This experiment was far from producing any weapon-grade material. Achieving that would require 80% enrichment of uranium-235. These experiments were a bit of a failure in terms of bomb making. Now back to the museum. The museum features cool posters, a short film and a model of a nuclear power plant. Across from Otto Hahn's table was the museum's low point in my opinion. An exhibit attempting to explain the process from ore to fissile material. The display was messy with missing or misplaced samples. For example, UO2 uranium dioxide isn't yellow, but the ammonium uranyl carbonate should have been represented instead there. The display case was a bit outdated and bent. It's a real shame in my opinion. But I've told them my findings and they told me that they are going to fix it. So maybe at the time of the publication from this video, it's already fixed. Who knows? So final thoughts. If this display were to be cleaned up and rewrapped, the museum could have easily be a 10 out of 10. For just 4 euros though, it's a quirky piece of nuclear history and it's well worth a visit. It's in the Black Forest, so if you're on the hunt for uranium in this area, I would highly recommend you go to this museum. I'd give it a 8 out of 10. Here's a view from the outside and well, on second glance, I don't think it's that bomb proof. Still, I am really glad I visited and now on to the next stop. Thanks for watching.